Freedom Oklahoma works to build an Oklahoma where all 2S LGBTQ plus people have the safety to thrive. It often includes advocacy, public education, coalition building, and empowerment in the civic process. A lot of people don't always realize that we actually do community building events, as well as trying to support individuals, especially young people. But we serve all ages, helping them do community engagement. We focus a lot on the civic process in general, so we really want to show up for them as best we can so that they can enact the things that they want within their own community. Our particular innovation is actually called Liberate. We've created a website where you can engage with inclusive, evidence-based, accurate sexual health information and education. Our goal is to really try to give caregivers the opportunity to you know, learn some things that they may not know, but also to unlearn some things that they have learned in their own sexual health education. We found that a lot of caregivers we spoke to never received sex ed that was evidence-based or inclusive to their identities and their experiences. So now as adults, they want to do better for the youth in their lives. They know they can do better, but they don't always know where or how to start. Through Liberate, we want to help caregivers process that information on their own time and without having to stress about the reliability of tech-based resources. So that inspired us to take an innovative approach to a standard resource hub that starts with a self-assessment questionnaire or an SAQ, which yields tailored content to fit their needs based off of the resources we've created in the hub. We created Liberate so caregivers can experience freedom from what held them back in their own sexual health education. That way they can be liberated and available to navigate sexual health with the youth in their lives now. I think one of my favorite things about Spark Innovation OKC was having the opportunity to actually prioritize inclusive sexual health in Oklahoma, but then to be able to have the means and the capacity to sit down and create this project is just a complete game changer. And something that we learned from the human-centered design process was that you can't always make assumptions about people's needs, even when you have the best intentions. So it's always good to be precise and get people's input on things. We've had organizations that are youth-based. We've had organizations that are sexual health-based. We've had organizations that specifically serve the disabled community, that specifically serve immigrant communities, that specifically serve POC communities. We've just had such an overwhelming opportunity to make sure that this is a resource that's going to serve everyone in the 2 LGBTQ plus community, and that includes allies. And so just seeing how we have all come together and made something you know so beautiful and so needed within our larger community i will forever be grateful for that